Hello and welcome to another KHDK.com exclusive interview, uh, interview. My name is Matt George. I am joined by another member of the Sacramento Republic FC. Training just wrapped up. So to be able to get Hayden Partain literally right off the training pitch here at Papa Murphy's Park to sit down with me and chat about this upcoming match against Portland Timbers 2 on Saturday, it truly is an honor, something that I hope you appreciate. I definitely appreciate Hayden. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. Yeah. I, uh, it's, Anytime. it's awesome to talk to you. Uh, after a training session wraps up, I understand that there's, there's plenty of stuff that you want to get off your chest, but there is a, I mean, coming off of a loss on Wednesday, back at home for a match against Portland Timbers 2, there seems to be, just basically for me looking on the outside in, it looked to be an extra energy in training today. I'm sure it's been for the last week or so of we dropped three points at home. We can't do that again here this Saturday. Yeah, no, we're, we're not happy with where we're at in the table. This is another team that sits above us in the table. So we've got to prove ourselves on Saturday. We've got to get a win. Like, there's nothing less than that that yeah. can happen. The, the table is very interesting right now, and you can check it out. USL's tweeted it out. It's also on uh, Republic's website. You can find it literally anywhere, and it's, it's neck and neck. The Republic currently sit in the 10th spot, which is the final playoff spot uh, in the USL Western Conference. However, they're tied in points with 11 and 12, I believe, but they're only three points behind sixth place. So there's just so much room. There's so much opportunity. So I have to, I, I got to believe, Hayden, that there's not really a sense of panic or concern yet amongst you guys. You recognize there's still a lot of time to play. Right, yeah, no, there's no, pan there's no panic or anything, but I mean, we're, we're not content and we're not, we can't get complacent. We know we have to prove ourselves. We know we're a better team than where we're at and, and we haven't shown that. So we, we aren't as good as we think we are. So mm -hmm. we're out here grinding every day, you know, working our butts off, um, going through tactical uh, orientation again, basically learning systems and, and we got to execute in the games better. A cliche in sports is that you, you, celebrate a win the night of and move on the next day or a loss stings the night of and you move on the next day is that the case with this team after dropping three points on on Wednesday just you know it's it's over it's done with now we look forward yeah yeah no we we make sure that we watch a video I think the next training following the following the game and make sure that we we let it soak you know and and we learn from it and mm -hmm. then we go over it and we have hard conversations with each other and and you know hold each other accountable because that's the only way you're going to learn from it so I wouldn't say we just completely forget about it because that's not okay. That's not. That's not good enough for the fans. Like you can't just. It's not nothing. Right. It's. It's very important, and and we we've, we've got to learn going forward that these th these points are precious. So we've we've just got to make it better this season. The rest of the season. We're hovering around that midway point of the season. Like I said, still so much uh, time, still so many games to play, and a lot of opportunity for you guys to move either up or down the standings. Mm -hmm. Hopefully up. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Does this is this the point now that you personally feel yourself and your team are getting into the the best shape that you're going to be in all season, the best form that you're going to be in all season, or do you want to try and peak towards the end of the season, hopefully going into a playoff run? Yeah, I mean, in all honesty, I think we want to win every game. Yeah. So I mean, there's teams that are already in stride and stuff, and that's good and all. But yeah, I mean, ultimately we want to peak at the right time. But but every every game matters, right? And and we look at the board, the table. We have games in hand on teams and people can all claim that but our coach always says like points on the board are the most important so I mean ultimately every game we want to have the same mentality whether we end up losing it or winning it it's got to be approached the right way and we, we need to win every game. How difficult is that though to maintain throughout a long season? Yeah it's very difficult and that's and that's why what's that's what makes every team uh, that does it great so it's it's the hardest thing that's what we're all fighting for um, but yeah su sustaining um, consistency is the hardest thing so I mean that's it's really hard you deal with injuries yeah and you need a full squad performance every time to basically pull them off. It's a tough league. Yeah. Speaking of the full squad, you uh, you mentioned we were chatting before the interview mm -hmm. started and you talked about just that next man up mentality that this team has. Top mm -hmm. to bottom, everybody seems ready to go. That's mm -hmm. really how head coach Simon Elliott uh, likes to keep it with you guys. Mm -hmm. And you can tell when you're watching mm -hmm. training that everybody is taking advantage of the minutes of every second and, and trying to make the most of their opportunities. Does that make it easier to sustain success throughout a season knowing that maybe if I'm down for an injury or if I just don't have it today, there's going to be a guy behind me to pick me up and pick up the slack? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, it's twofold, I really think, you know. I mean, it always holds you, you accountable to pushing your level. You know, you can't you can't slip up. You've always got to push better. There's someone knocking on the door behind you that can take over your spot. But then again, like if you do get dropped, you know, it, you got that uh, psychological. You know, you might lose your confidence and whatnot. But I mean, we have a great group of guys, so we we hold each we help each other, you know, out. 
Um, I mean, there's guys like me and Drew, we're fighting with the same spot over and over. Like, we encourage each other, we push each other. I mean, it's ultimately not each other's decision of who goes on the field, but we're going to push each other. That's, that's what we're paid to do, you know, make each other better. And, I mean, ultimately it's up to the coaches who decides. I mean, we don't have to d agree with it, but we have to respect it and we have to carry on with our, with our jobs. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but behind us, the State Fair, the California State Fair is being set up. Of course, Papa Murphy's Park here is at the Cal Expo uh, Fairgrounds. If you haven't been yet, what's wrong with you? You need to come out. It's a fantastic <laughs> place to watch uh, a soccer match. And if you are a Sacramento native and you haven't yet gotten an opportunity over the last four years to watch the Republic play, you really need to make it out here. This Saturday's match is a even better reason to come and check it out because the state fair is going on and if you purchase tickets to the match that also gets you free admission to the state fair so you can come to the fair all day long enjoy the food the fun the ride and then wrap up the night with an excellent uh, republic fc soccer match and and hayden that's always exciting for me not just for the picture's sake because you always get fantastic pictures <laughs> yeah. of the backdrop but that usually invites in a lot of fans that maybe aren't necessarily hardcore or diehard soccer fans that are here at the state fair see the field and go you know what I want to check that out. Is that exciting for you? And does the team feel an extra buzz or energy with the fair here? Yeah, that's very exciting. And I mean, if it does bring it, the fair does bring in more fans and stuff and we do our jobs and we play the way that we want to play and score a bunch of goals, that's exciting. And that can bring more fans and that can just build to the atmosphere we already have. Yeah, the crowd support already this year has been fantastic. I mean, it's fantastic every year. It's something that I, I believe you guys are used to, but you definitely don't take for uh, for granted. How much does that fuel into your energy and your guys' performance on the pitch? Yeah, it feels a lot, you know. I mean, being out there, you have extra adrenaline and, and you want to win for your fans. But with that being said, it, whole, it, it makes you have a high standard, you know. You have like, all these fans are here and, and you do and you do poorly, like yeah. you're going to hear about that too. So, I mean, I'm very, I'm very half glass, half uh, empty guy, kind of thinking kind of guy, <laughs> yeah. but, but yeah, no, I love the atmosphere and you play and live for that and you're, I'm grateful to be on a team that is, has that much love and support behind it, yeah. you know. So. One of the things that's really cool is in U.S. Open Cup play over the past few seasons, you've gotten opportunities to, to travel and play in different MLS stadiums, getting to play uh, in uh, San Jose, Avaya Stadium this year. Last year it was mm -hmm. uh, LAFC that you got mm -hmm. a chance. How does the crowd support and the crowd situation here in Sacramento, where we know MLS mm -hmm. is a dream and a goal, mm -hmm. uh, compared to those massive stadiums? Yeah, no, um, I mean, the LAFC game, I think, is more relative to to what we have here, um, the San Jose. I don't, I don't know what their support is, but there weren't, weren't many fans in that game. Uh, but no, I mean, it's it's similar. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's right it's right there. I, from the city standpoint, the infrastructure, the club's ready. Um, you know, and we just need to get the the performances on the field right to show that we're finally ready. Before we wrap up Saturday's match, is there any specific approach that you're taking into this match against Portland Timbers, a team that's ahead of you in the standings, but a team that you've had success against in the past? Yeah, no, we, we lost to them last game, so we're out here to get three points against, against them. We've gotten zero points off of the table from them, and we got two red cards last game, so we, we want to win. That's yeah. all. That's it. Last thing for you, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot a little bit, but a big story in American soccer right now, of course, is the U.S. women's national team, mm -hmm. what they did winning the World Cup mm -hmm. uh, in France just last night at the ESPY Awards, winning uh, best team. And, and what they've done, in my opinion, mm -hmm. for soccer in America is fantastic. Uh, the, the men also making it to the, uh, the Gold Cup final, unfortunately falling uh, to Mexico in that match. But for someone that plays soccer every day uh, in America, what was it like for you to see both teams, but especially the women, have that success, win on that stage? Uh, and what do you think that does for the sport here uh, in our country? Yeah, no, it's great. Um, I'm happy that the women won. I'm, I watched every game that they played. And it's good for I see I see girls and you see on social media and like girls are inspired by them and and that's what's going to drive the the game in the future you yeah. know we need kids to to join in and and work their butts off now you know when they're young and strive to be better and we need coaches and we need good infrastructure in the way that youth coaching goes and, and the way the youth system runs all the way from top to bottom so I think it's good and then. The men dropping, you know, losing in the Gold Cup final. I mean, Mexico played a, a certain system. They executed really well. And I mean, yeah, we want better. We want that better. But I mean, ultimately, they're there and, and there's lessons to be learned. And hopefully they can they can correct that. And they have a great coach. So it'll be good. I, I see they're, them doing well in the future. Well, if you love the U.S. women's national team because of the personalities or their overall talent level, I really think you're going to see a lot of that same personality and talent level here 
at uh, Papa Murphy's Park. If you check out the Sacramento Republic FC, Hayden and his teammates, they always give their all. Uh, it's a fantastic atmosphere. I encourage you to check it out, especially with the State Fair being here as well. Be sure to uh, come out to Papa Murphy's Park, get your tickets for the match against the Portland Timbers too this Saturday. Hayden, best of luck. Thank you so much for taking Thank the you. time, my man. And, Thanks uh, for having me. We'll, uh, we'll have to do it again soon.